Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, the title of this video, that's impossible or whatever it's going to end up being because I don't have the title yet, but I know the word impossible is in there. This is not clickbait. This is something that I set up for a demonstration to show you, and I will ultimately show you how to turn down an extremely thin wall tube or object, not make it from scratch, straighten it out because uh, the influence that a three-jaw chuck has on a part is pretty substantial. Well, in setting up that particular video to demonstrate this, something happened and I, I just had it scratch my head and step back from the surface plate and the indicator and go, well, that's, that can't be, that's impossible, can't possibly be. Let me show you what happened. And then I'm going to take you out and I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to do it. You're going to see it done. We're going to check it on a surface plate. And when you see the results, you're going to go, oh, that's impossible. All right, here we go. Round object in a lathe. Thin wall, plastic, pipe, tubing, whatever. You know, I'm actually going to do it around. Watch this. <laughs> enough. Round two. You put that in a three-jaw chuck and you give it a squeeze. And guess what happens? Wow. This happens. Greatly exaggerated. This is what happens. You crush that round shape into a God knows what it's called because it's just a bunch of round corners that have collapsed into a somewhat triangular shape. Now you do your turning, you do your boring, and you can create a round part under these circumstances. Not a problem. We're going to turn it. It's going to be round. We're going to bore it. It's going to be round. This is going to be concentric to this. All is well. You unloosen the chuck. There it is. And what happens to this? This goes back to being round, and this takes on this ungodly shape. So when you part it off, you can see it, you can hear it as the parting tool is coming through. You'll hear that as it comes across the high spots and low spots. It's not just going to drop off clean like a piece of aluminum. You're actually going to hear it. You're going to see it. And when it drops off in your hand, you're going to look at it, and it's going to look like a pissing out of a, a rotary engine. And then you're going to take it into inspection, and you're going to roll it across the surface plate, and it's going to go, oh, 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 oh. And when you put an indicator on this piece to see how far out of round it is, it's only going to be a couple of thousandths out of round when you can see this from across the room. And it just boggles the mind why you think you have such a destroyed, awful, ungodly, God knows what result because you put too much pressure on your part, but when you check it, it's only a couple thousandths out. I, I couldn't believe what I saw. Let's take a walk out and make it happen. You know, it's pretty interesting to see. This is the material that we're going to be using for today's demonstration. It is approximately three and a half inches across, 25, 50, 75, 82 millimeters, give or take. Quarter inch wall, six millimeters, about two inches long, about 50 millimeters long. We're going to put this in a three jaw chuck, we're going to squash the life out of it, and uh, that'll be step one. A nice tight shot of the front of the chuck so you can see the distortion. I have about one inch of projection on this part. Let's give it a good squeeze.
All right. Now you can see the three-sided ugly that I drew on the board inside has now taken shape on this part. Watch right in this area here. Clearly running out. Let's turn a nice true face on that. And board. Let's go a little deeper. Alright, with the camera repositioned, I want you to watch right in this area here. Okay, see the OD of the original stock? That's the amount of distortion, the amount of pucker or squeeze or bulge between the jaws that I illustrated on the whiteboard. Now although this diameter here is nice and true, they're going to trade positions as soon as I release the pressure on this chuck. So let me bore the inside and see what happens. Let's true up the inside, put an indicator on it, and show you exactly what we're looking at. I will probably have to dust cut the OD as well Removing the stock material from inside that pipe is going to relieve some of the plastic stress and it will probably distort just from that internal bore cut. I'm going to match the depth of the bore to the turn of the OD as not to compromise the grip. One final dust cut on the OD. All right, let's check the current concentricity and roundness of the turned part. The chuck tension has not been altered. Okay, you can see that it is moving right where the jaw is. Let's move it a little bit and see what we got. Perfectly illustrated. I would say that is a result of removing the material from inside. I would not be shocked if this was perfect inside. Or better than the outside, let's put it that way. Okay, much better. 
But for sake of this demonstration, the outside has got to be better than 10th house. Let's do it again. I slowed the RPM down on that pass because if this material is starting to whip out because it's thin, I did not want that to affect the geometry. Let's check it again. going to have to accept that this material is alive and is going to move as you cut it. Let's call that 2,000s out around. 2,000s total indicator reading. But you can see the eccentricity at the jaw. Look at that. This part is under tremendous stress. Alright, let's part it off. That's the stress coming back into the part. You can see the part starting to run out. Now this is a very dangerous opportunity right here. Do not grab that by hand. If one side stays put and the other side doesn't and this thing goes eccentric and your finger's in there, you're going to go around with the material. The machine is out of gear and I'm going to plunge the tool in by hand and break that chip. I'm hoping you can see that. This thing is anything but round. You can see that you can see it. It's perfect. What is now the, the low radius used to be the high spot because the jaws were out here on the smaller radius. If you can see that, I really hope you can. Let's put this on a surface plate and roll it across the surface plate and then put an indicator on it. Check it. You're not going to believe what you see. All right, let's do a roll test on this. Unquestionably, the sign of a triangulated part continues to find a low spot. Alright, we're going to let the tube come to a rest on each of its low spots and we are going to mark the high spot on the opposite side. The little red dot. Now it's real safe to say if I put that around right there, it should find another one. Based on the fact that we're looking at 120 degrees apart. And let's just say right there. That holds true. This should be another one. Which it is. There you go. Let's put the indicator on that. Let's see how far out around this thing is. This is when you get to argue with the inspector. Because the inspector's going to go, ah, it's only 2,000 out around or 3,000 out around, which you know it's not just by looking at it. My God, you can see that on camera. Well, let's see what the needle says.
about a one before. Let's go to the next red and see what that says. Zero. Next one. Five. Let's go in between them. Zero. Five low. Zero. Let's make this two and a half to the high. And our current range should now be plus two and a half to minus two and a half. That is five thousandths out of round total indicator reading. Yet to look at this part, this part is an absolute banana. That is a head scratcher. When you look at the distance between here and here, as it reads zero on the indicator, here to here, and here to here, that means these dimensions are all very similar. It, however, does not indicate how low or how high this is from the designated center when this thing was turning. So this particular rolling inspection on the table is very deceiving. If we were to try to correct this issue right now, I would guarantee that it's going to take more than a 5,000 skin pass to true it up. Just by looking at it, it's almost, it's almost inconceivable that 5,000s would clean this up. That was the key to the entire video that I had planned on shooting, but when I saw this happen, I could not believe it. I had to share that with you. So you can get lied to in inspection, and feel free to argue with the inspector, and inspectors feel free to argue with your guys. But the only way to adequately check this part is to spin it. That's, well, not that way, of course. That worked out, though, didn't it? Look at that. Okay, the only way to check this part is to spin it this way in the machine. Pinch it, trap it, do whatever you can to check it, and I guarantee that needle on that indicator is going to move more than five thousandths. But would you have expected that to be only two and a half out, rolling it underneath an indicator set this way? Not me. Another shop gremlin to consider. Tune in for the video where I show you how to correct that outer diameter. That is a very simple process, but maybe not something that you would normally consider. There you go. Thanks for watching, guys.